What's up, everybody? This is Alex from Heavy New York, invading California for NAM 2019. We just interviewed Ira Black, and now we are here with I Am Morbid's Tim Young. How's it going? Yeah, it's great to talk to you again. And you too. It's been a minute. Yeah, and a year. Yeah, I can't believe it's been a year ago. And you know, it was only for like three minutes with somebody like dancing on the fountain in the background. Yeah, you literally got me right when I was leaving to go to my hotel, and I was with my ex at the time, and I was getting crazy texts, and it was it was drama. <laughs> so. Um, hopefully this one will be a better interview. I'm not too exhausted. I just got here a few hours ago. I drove, uh, took three hours to get here. Oh, wow. Where are you from? Uh, I live like north, like kind of Valencia, Canyon Country area. Oh, okay. Off the 14th freeway. It's, it's, it's a bit of a drive. That's why I like New York. Everything is within walking distance. Yeah, right? Yeah. But it's so awesome to have you here. Um, you know, you obviously drum for I Am Morbid. And I am what I'm curious about is, as a drummer for you, being that you played with so many bands, in the end is... It kind of all similar because it's all about keeping rhythm and keeping beat or do you have is it a completely different mind frame playing with a different band well it's always a different mind frame because um, you know certain mainly guitar players and other people in the band they want to hear certain things or they want it played a certain way so every experience with every musician I've played with or band it's always a little different approach because it, it varies you know a lot on what what they want yeah. and um, so, uh, you know, Morbid Angel or I Am Morbid, you know, I did Morbid Angel for, for years, and then um, I Am Morbid, Dave and I do I Am Morbid, and I've been playing those songs for nearly 10 years. Yeah. So it's, I, I, it's like clockwork for me, I know that. Yeah. But um, it's, yeah, it's, it, it, it all varies, because every artist kind of wants you to play a certain thing a certain way, or lay back, or speed it up, you know, especially live, you know, unless you're on a click. Yeah. Then you're just following the click. Yeah. Well, um, what I was curious about is actually being that you played with Morbid Angel, but now you're doing I Am Morbid, you are playing similar songs um, that mm -hmm. in both bands. So did you have to change anything at all going from Morbid Angel to I Am Morbid? Or is no, it not really. I mean, it's pretty much David and I play these songs exactly the way we played them with, with Morbid Angel. So it's the same exact formula between David and I. Um, we just, you know, obviously we, we have different guitar players. Uh, Bill and Ira, and they're both great players, so they were able to adapt pretty quick, and it's it's great. Everything's tight, solid. Yeah. Now, what I was um, curious about, like, you know, there's a very famous saying um, in rock and roll, if your drummer sucks, your band sucks. So do you sometimes have to lay down, a, do you sometimes lay down a rhythm for a band to follow, or do you, like, do you listen to the riffs and come up with the beat according to that? It just depends on the writing process and who I'm, who I'm working with. If it's already pre-written, then sometimes I still always give my little input, and um, and it, it's really what what the what what the you know whoever's writing for writing together, you know for the Divine Heresy stuff it was a you know everybody kind of contributed so we would just go back and forth on what felt good, and it would be a a process really old fashioned. I don't think anyone writes like that anymore. Everybody just kind of does emails and sends files and I program this so it's a little different. It just depends on how you're writing. I think. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Now playing like, you know, I know you guys are heading to like I Am Morbid practice later and everything, but like when you're playing in a practice space versus playing live, is it a completely different experience? Oh, completely. Entirely different. It's night and day difference because rehearsal, you're trying to listen to what mistakes and correct any areas that may be a concern. So when you get on a live, you know, on stage or something or live, you're prepared for it, but you never really fully prepared live because anything can happen anytime. It's so random and spontaneous. So you have to be prepared. If even if there's a train wreck, you gotta kind of learn to keep going, and, and and keep it together. Sometimes there'll be a train wreck and the crowd doesn't even notice it. It's funny, you know. Yeah. Or maybe other musicians do. Yeah. I've seen bands. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that completely fell apart, and they completely picked it back up and kept going. And that's that's what you have to do. When rehearsals, uh, it's different too. The energy. Rehearsal, you're you're in a different mindset than when you are on stage, or at least I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I would love to do a quick like a uh, nerd out on gear for you because I've always said that drummers are the biggest gear nerds. Well, after Gene Hoagland. Well, yeah. There's a lot of stuff. We have tons of shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so. Yeah. This guy plays the bass drum. He plays the floor tom. He plays the snare, the hi hat cymbal, the crash cymbal. He plays all, all those instruments. <laughs> I do it all. <laughs> what can I say? Well, being that, because drumming, I feel like it's not even just about, it has to sound good, obviously, it has to, but there's also a comfort level, because you're 
constantly moving around. So, like, do you have to have kind of your gear adjusted to the style of music that you play? Um, well, not really like a style of music I play. I mean, it depends. I mean, some some friends of mine they'll play in multiple different type of genres. So they'll have like their their little jazz kit or the you know the small club kit and then they'll have their whatever kit and it, for me i mean i have a rock drum set i have a rock configuration it's kind of similar to a, you know bottom setup single kick rack two floors and then all my other kits are double bass kits but it's a little trickier for a drummer to jump on in another drum set because there's so many variables it's not like a guitar player can grab another guitar and start playing there's a little more going on in setup and configuration so i think um if you can if you can get yourself used to being out of the box even changing your setup sometimes so you're not so you prepared kind of mentally that something may or may not be somewhere mm-hmm. i think it, it's it's good preparation ahead of time maybe but uh um yeah there's a lot more going on for a drummer than a guitar player as far as a dr- drum configuration and stuff yeah. like that yeah what's your double bass uh Pedal. You use Iron Cobra, DW? Uh, I use Axis. Axis. Axis pedals, yeah. Axis A's. I've been using them for, geez, like 20 something years. Damn. So, yeah, a long time. I have a great relationship with them. Uh, I, I, I love them. They're tried and true product. They're great. Uh, for, for rock stuff, if I play rock stuff, sometimes I, I don't. Because uh, the Axis pedals are all direct drive. Um, for some of the rock stuff, I really like the feel of a cam and sprocket. So I use the old Camco pedals. I love them. They're great. They don't make them anymore, so you can find them on eBay. <laughs> and Gene Hoagland does the same thing. Well, he was. I think he finally switched to something. I, I don't even know what the hell. But for years, he played Camcos, and, and I always like Camcos or the original DW5000s, turbos. That's all, all it was was a modified and improved Camco pedal. Wow. But simple. Less is more. All these four chains and all this, it's added weight. I do it's not awesome. envy Mike Portnoy's drum tech, and I told him that at the red carpet. <laughs> he was telling me he doesn't even know how to set his drum kit up. <laughs> yeah, he mentioned yeah. that in my interview as well. He's like, I can't even set it up without my tech. Yeah, yeah. So, I, you need like five people to set that thing up. And, it's quite a project. <laughs> and most bands, and, and, and don't like when you're playing live, don't you have like only like 15 minutes to set up and then 15 minutes to take your shit off? It depends on your slot on the, on the tour or whatever you're doing. If you're opening mm-hmm. slot, I mean... Sometimes, yeah, you got 15 minutes, and as soon as you're done, you, you got to get dragged. You, they drag it off the stage. I always try to have a minimal setup because I don't really, I don't need all the stuff. I, I think it's, to me, me personally, I think it's really impressive when you have someone like Buddy Rich, yeah, who had a very minimal setup and made it sound huge. Yeah, you know what I mean. Or, same thing with Bonham, certain drummers. So, I mean, it's cool. Some of the prog rock stuff, you have to have a lot of different things yeah. for, for, for what the music calls for. But I, I'm a really big fan of simple. So even my drum set, I've got three crashes. I mean, I can get by with one china. So, and it's also less stuff that can break when you're on stage. The more stuff you have on a drum kit, the more, uh, the more of a risk you have of something failing or breaking. So it's just easier to have a less busy configuration. It's yeah. a little less trouble yeah. are sometimes. You, are you a Sabian or Zildjian? Sabian. Sabian? Those things are great. They've been around forever. I love them. I've been with them for 20 plus years too. They're like family to me. They take care of me. Anything I've ever needed or ever need, I all I have to do is call them. And and I have a, I have a great relationship with them. And I, I can't wait. I'm looking forward to... Uh, actually going to see them now. I passed their booth, and they have some really, really awesome stuff in the works right now. Um, I can't wait. Yeah. And finally, uh, do you need, because of the fast style that you play, do you need nylon tips, or do you, are you good with wood tips as well? I use plastic beaters. Really? Yeah, I like plastic, but I, I, if I don't have plastic, I like wood. The, the Actually, the Campcos I have have old wooden Damar beaters. I just like the attack. Um, there's just a little more of a uh, just a little more of a bite, you know, on the high end with a, with a wood beater. Felt beaters are cool too, but I think generally most of the stuff that I play requires a little more attack on the kick. So for me in my application, I like a hard beater instead of a felt. Okay. There you go. So before we go, thank you so much for your time. Thank and you, man. Yeah, great it's good to, to see you again. Yeah, this this is how it should have been the first time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we were so rushed. But, yeah. no. but uh, you know, I know that you're heading to the Whiskey A Go Go with I Am Morbid. I heard yeah. you guys are working on like a tour. As yep. please yeah. take that shit to New York City, please. I hope so, man. It would be awesome. I'm, I'm from up stu- upstate New York, so um, not we're too upstate. far. We're uh, upstate. Little little town called Rochester. Oh. Okay, I grew up in Rockland County, so okay. not fully upset. I might also be from Ohio, I know. Like, <laughs> Rochester, that's far. Yeah. But uh, is there just anything else you'd like to promote? 
No, that's it. Uh, look out for uh, I Am Morbid 2019. We're looking on. We're looking at doing some European dates this year, and of course the the, the great European summer festivals and maybe some select U.S. dates. Awesome. Well, everybody, Tim Young of I Am Morbid. We'll see you next time on Heavy New York.